Hello there and welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 308. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. If you're watching us live as you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. And hello to my replay watchers, I call you my replay warriors. I see that Bubba G is in the house, welcome. Greg, my brother, is here. I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving, doing something that you loved or eating something that you loved. This was our first Thanksgiving without my dad. It was his favorite holiday and he was a big time foodie. So we, we, cheer, we did a cheers to my dad and we feasted anyways. And I think the older I get, the more I wonder why we cook all day to eat for 10 minutes. But you know what? It's the experience and Nolan and I feasted on uh, Thanksgiving leftovers for what? Two or three more meals. Lily and Brian do not do leftovers. So they had ham and cheese omelets instead. Well, that just meant there was more leftovers for Greg and I. So I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving Nolan. to those of you that celebrate. What's that? Nolan. Nolan? Did he, I, what? he said Greg. Oh, I said Greg. You know what? Greg, I've been doing that. I keep calling Nolan Greg. <laughs> Uh, it's because I've spent more of my life with you, Gregors, than Nolan so far. Anyways, I am a little bit discombo com discombobulated today. I'm still a little bit on vacation brain, and I was working all day long on the computer, so I ran out of time, but I do have two projects for you. I just don't have a sneak peek to show you because they're currently unassembled. We will make them on the fly tonight, but I've got an origami lidded gift box. Really, the box goes together without any cutting or adhesive other than a little bit of adhesive on the belly band, but it only uses a full sheet of six by six. And then I've got a really quick and easy Christmas card for you today from the, I think it's the Merry Bold and Bright Suite. So um, a couple of things, we'll do some housekeeping here. If you do have questions for me tonight, be sure to put a cue before that question, otherwise it's just gonna be a comment. That will help that question make it into my cue when we do tonight's live q and I'm gonna save all your questions for the end of the live stream so that I can focus on tonight's projects. Uh, that also helps our replay watchers as well. Let's see, when you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. All you need to do is use my magic shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop, and that will auto-magically add my current host code for you, as well as ensure you're shopping with me. Now, if your order is $150 or more, don't use the host code, or you can take the host code off your order. You will earn Pixie Perks from me, you're also gonna earn Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up on orders of $150 or more. We are in the midst of the last chance um, sale promotion. It's when we find out what is gonna be retiring from the mini catalog. That was announced last week, I believe. And there are some items discounted up to 60% off. So if you are a customer of mine, you got an email with a lot of explanation of the best way to get um, more bang for your buck based on discounts. And um, oftentimes what happens is all the bundle pricing goes away. So for things that might be carrying over to, or I should say carrying over past the mini catalog, uh, you'll want to purchase the bundle pricing to get that 10% discount. But um, anyways, that's the scoop of the last chance. Those are all those products are while supplies last through January 3rd. And what else? Uh, if you have shopped with me in the last six months and have shopped and have spent $25 or more, look out for a special email from me tomorrow. I was trying to get that out today. It didn't happen. Tomorrow, I'm going to send you a special email to request your complimentary copy of the catalog. Again, this is for uh, customers who have shopped in the last six months. So since June 1st, if you've spent $25 with me, you're going to get a special email to request the new January to April 2024 mini catalog that also will come with the celebration brochure. So keep an eye on your inbox. That's going to start tomorrow and I'll send you a couple reminders if I don't get a request from you. So there's that going on. I think that's about it. Um, seasonal sale was last week or a couple weeks ago. Uh, Stampin' Up! got all caught up with picking and shipping those orders through the end of the day yesterday. 
So there was a little bit of a delay there. I know for a few of you that ordered towards the end of the sale, again, last week they were closed for Thanksgiving and the Friday after Thanksgiving. So it was a short week for them to pick and ship, but I believe as of the end of the day yesterday, they got all caught up with seasonal sale orders. I took advantage of that myself and got a few new ink pads and some card stock, so that was fun. Now, I do have a little bit of show and tell for you. Let's see, maybe. If I can find my, here. I got some really amazing happy mail in the mail. So first I wanna give a shout out to Annette in the UK. Um, I finally had a chance to stop by my mailbox and she sent me some of the Swizzles Love Hearts direct from the UK. I had mentioned this on a live stream, a few live streams back. I forget which project it was. It might have been this one with the Andes mints, well, that has the Hershey's nuggets from when we tested that on the stream. I thought that would might be something cute to fit in there. So she sent me this. So Annette, if you're watching or watching me on replay, thank you. There's a card on the way over the ocean to you. Um, but this is the card that came with it, which is just beautiful. I loved that paper from a couple of mini catalogs ago. And then I got this beautiful card from Mary Jo. Mary Jo, I don't know if you are watching tonight. The kids absolutely loved the Disney uh, water bottles that you got them. They are using them as we speak. And there is fun happy mail in the mail to you as well. So um, I love the way that you used that banner punch to do these really cool star shapes. How pretty is that? So Mary Jo, thank you. This came from Mary Ellen Bray. It was inspired by my hot chocolate pocket. She sent me this awesome spiced apple cider pouch. So Mary Ellen, thank you. I love this ribbon and the little pumpkin. Beautiful, beautiful. Really nice note card from my friend in the Netherlands, I believe, Wilma. Thank you for a congratulations card. That's beautiful. That came from one of our kits. And then this is from Carol, a beautiful Thanksgiving card as well. So fun happy mail for show and tell this week. I don't have the kids because we were they were on vacation last week or off school. Um, they didn't do any artwork for you guys. So, all right, we are gonna start with the origami lidded gift box. So all you're gonna need for this is a six by six inch piece of paper and I'm gonna be using this fun tree pattern from Mary Bold and Bright, okay? So if you had a directional pattern, this one is kind of directional, although it doesn't matter top or bottom because you've got the trees kind of going both ways, but I would say that this is a uh, vertical pattern. So um, we're gonna go ahead in this pattern, I'm gonna trim off one inch from the side here. You're gonna have a little bit of a trick with this origami uh, lidded box if your pattern is really directional because of the way that the lid closes. And I'll show you that once we put it together. So with this pattern in vertical mode, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off one inch from the side. So we're gonna end up then with two pieces, one that is one by six and one that is five by six, or rather six inches by five inches six inches by one inch, okay? And I love six inch projects here because they're great for product shares. They're also great for 12 by 12 because you can get at least, well, you can get four of them out of a sheet of 12 by 12. Now I'm gonna bring in the Simply Scored here and let's see, make sure you can see that. I've put our little one inch strip just off to the side. We're gonna use that towards the end here. We're at the end of the project. All right, so with this sort of in portrait mode, um, along the five inch side, I'm gonna score this at one and a quarter from each side. So I'll just do one and a quarter, rotate one and a quarter, okay? Then I'm gonna turn it to the long side or the six inch side, and I'm gonna go ahead and score this at one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, and five. So we're doing every inch and a quarter, but you're gonna end up with a section at the top here that's only one inch, okay? So this may not technically be true origami because the op equal and opposite sides are not identical, 
but the, there's a method to my madness because I wanted to make sure that we could create this out of a six by six piece. So I'm gonna repeat those measurements again. On the short side, inch and a quarter on each side. Then on the long side, it's inch and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, and five, okay? Now the challenge will be to find my bone folder. So I'm in the midst, well, Brian and I are in the midst of getting ready to rebuild my video setup. And so stuff's kind of all over the place right now. That's what, does that happen to you guys when you've got some time off from work and you decide to tackle a project and it doesn't quite get finished and <laughs> everything's everywhere? Oh goodness. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold and burnish. I like to do it this way. So we're gonna do those two, if I'm looking at this with the short side at the top, I'm gonna do the two side folds first, or the two side score lines. And then I wanna keep those folded in as I fold and burnish the rest of the score lines. I think that that's just gonna help a little bit with the lid fitting into the, or I should say the lid fitting over the base. So I'm just gonna kind of fold along those score lines with those sides folded in. I see you guys are tuning in from some chilly places. We were, what, 26 degrees this morning at the bus stop, which is cold for us here in Atlanta. So, all right, <laughs> we've done that. I'm gonna bring a template so that you can see we're gonna put these diagonal folds. I have a new teleprompter so I can look right at you when I talk and see what I'm showing you at the same time. Oh gosh, all right, so we're gonna manually fold these diagonal lines and I just want you to pay attention to where your one inch section is because that is the section that's at the very top. So I'm gonna start with the bottom. So we've got our one inch section here along the top and the bottom here, I am going to take this score line and line it up with this folded edge. And that's gonna create our first diagonal. I'm gonna bring that back up closer to the camera so you can see that. So this horizontal score line meeting up with that folded edge. And you just wanna make sure that you've got that lined up nicely there. And then what happens is you're creating that diagonal score line right here that coincides with this on the template, okay? We're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side, that horizontal score line at the bottom, lining it up with that folded edge. I don't know, you can use your fingernail or use the bone folder just to come in and burnish that diagonal score line, okay? So then I'm gonna turn it this way where that half, or sorry, that one inch section is facing towards me this way. And then I'm skipping a square here and then I'm gonna go ahead and take this horizontal score line. So it's a little hard to see on the pattern, but this is the one we did the first digital or digital diagonal score line. Okay, skip that square. And then we're gonna go to the next, we're focusing on the next square, or I should say the first, second, third square, lining up the horizontal score line with the folded edge again. And again, if uh, you're wanting to get it lined up right there at the intersection of the score line and the folded edge, you could put your fingernail there or the tip of your bone folder. And come in and crease like that, okay? So when I open this, if I turn it this way, because that's kind of the way we're looking at it, you've got these two diagonal lines are kind of going away from each other, okay? So then we're gonna repeat the same thing. First, second, we're focusing on the third square. So from that horizontal score line, meeting it up with that folded edge. Now you can absolutely do these diagonal score lines with a ruler and a stylus. I just like to do them by hand, okay? So we're starting to form part of the box. Do you see how that's starting to come together? Okay. So now I'm gonna flip it around again, and then we're going to take the top 
horizontal score line and meet it up with the edge. Get that lined up there. So when you look at those diagonal score lines, they're creating a triangle here. And there's a horizontal score line in between. Okay, so again, you'll just wanna look at the template. I will have a project sheet linked by the end of the day tomorrow. That was one of the other things I didn't get a chance to finish today. Only one of me, right? So we've got those three diagonal score lines. We're gonna ultimately have four, but we'll do the last one um, last, okay? So then we're going to make sure I'm doing that the right way, it's this way. Okay, so again, having that one inch at the top, this horizontal score line, folding it up to meet the edge. Like so. And this is starting to create our lid. So we've got our box. Hopefully you can start to see that coming together. Did she just start talking to me again? I think I said the same thing. She's smart too, though. She's tough. Okay, she knows better than to, um, we're talking about A, A L E X A. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, so if I open this up and we start to look at the score lines compared to the template, we've got these two going outwards, these two coming together to create a triangle, and then we're going to do these last two at the top, and that's just going to give our origami box a really nice finish. So for that, I've got the one inch section towards me at the bottom and I'm going to line up this edge right here with that score line. So you'll see because this isn't a full inch and a quarter section, this little diagonal piece, this edge isn't going to quite meet up to the score line. It's short by a quarter of an inch and that's because I adapted to make sure that we could create this from a six by six, okay? So same thing over here. We're gonna take that corner and fold it up to that score line. And I'm coming up just short of that horizontal score line. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just underneath it there, okay? All right, so now we're going to kind of play with the paper a little bit to try to get the box put together. So I don't think you need to see these score lines any longer, but let me just show you one last time with all those pieces open, those score lines uh, referring to the template will help you when you create your own version of this, okay? All right, so let's fold those corners in. The other thing I like to do here is just fold on those score lines again. Now we already did that when we folded and burnished, but essentially what we're gonna do here is these go down like so. Just to kind of show you from the side, that is our lid, I'm not using any adhesive. And look how cool when this closes can you see how those stripes lined up on the inside with this Mary Bold and Bright designer series paper? I thought that was such a fun, such a fun thing with the, um, those stripes on the inside. So what I like to do is keep the lid here kind of on my desktop and then I kind of fold the base into it. Now I'm going to pinch a little bit on the sides. The first time you do this, you're going to wrestle with it just a little bit. Okay, but then once the paper kind of knows where it's going, look at that. So you've got a box with a built-in lid and it's got that really cool diagonal side there. And I don't think that looks too bad with that closing short. I thought that was a pretty good concession to make to fit this into a six by six. So let me go ahead and show you how that goes together again. So we fold in those top two corners and fold like so, okay? So you're kind of folding these triangles in and what that forms is not only the box lid, but the back of the base. And then these fold in. This is our base and this is our lid. And the only trick you need to do is to get along the sides that base to fit into the lid. So that's why I kind of like doing it with the lid on the desktop, 
and then squeezing the base in. Now, it's, it's gonna fight you a little bit, like it's not gonna really wanna stay closed on its own. Once you kind of break it in, it does stay put. I'm gonna show you a couple other different versions with different paper. But that is what our little one inch by six inch strip is for, okay? So uh, we're actually gonna hide the seam. I'm gonna do the striped pattern on the outside. I love showing off our double-sided designer series paper this way because you can see both sides. You don't have to make a decision. So I've got this, the right edge, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch back from this top edge. And then I'm just gonna dry fit this. I'm not squeezing too tight, but just dry fit ar around the box. Okay, now that seam's gonna sit on the top and that's gonna feel uncomfortable, but we're actually just gonna cover that so that um, the sentiment um, we'll hide the seam and then the recipient will, won't see the seam at all. So I like to just kind of pinch right there on the corners, kind of creasing the lines there. You see it like that. And then I do like to come in and burnish. As I burnish, I like to make sure I'm lining up the edges for those straight score lines. There we go. Okay, so we just creased or burnished those score lines. And then I'm gonna bring in my liquid glue. Basically, here's the top of our box. I'm gonna set that in the belly band, but we're gonna close the belly band over the top, okay? What I like to do is on the back side of one piece and the front side of the other, I'm just gonna put a little strip of liquid glue. So liquid glue, I'll show you before I put it together where I put the glue. Okay, the strip that go do goes down on top, you're gonna put glue on the back side. The strip that's gonna be on the bottom, you put glue right there on the top side or the front side. And then you just wanna line up those edges here. Again, I'm not squeezing it too tight because I wanna be able to slide this on and off. Just hold that into place, okay? Put the lid on my glue. Just make sure that that's stuck down, okay? And then we can slide that belly band off and open it. Now, let me show you what can fit. Let's see. Put the, whoopsies. I dropped a piece. <laughs> so this is the sample that I made ahead of time. And I can fit two Ferrero Rochers or this is what, a Ron Noir and a Raffaello, but they're all the same size as the Fer Ferrero Rochers. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop those in there. Those will give this box a little bit more structure too, because they're a really snug fit, but they do fit, okay? Now other things, the, um, the measurements of the inside of the box are inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter by two and a half, okay? So I know you can fit Hershey's Nuggets, um, you guys are gonna find a bunch of different treats for sure, okay? So those will go in there. Again, you just wanna make sure you can get that lid around the edges, like so. We'll slide our little belly band on here. And the belly band will loosen up a little bit as you kind of slide it on and off. That's gonna hold it all together. Rolled up money, great suggestion, okay? So I'm gonna show you one more time, especially for those watching on the replay, how that box fits together. Okay, so we have got, if I close these, this is the front of our box. This is the back. So basically all of these are kind of folding inwards, okay? And if it's easier, kind of fold that back so you can picture the lid and the base. And then we just want the lid to fit over the base. I'm pinching on the sides a little bit on the base. Again, if it's easier for you to put the lid on your desktop and then roll the base into it, sometimes that's an easier way to get it to fit, okay? So let's put those Ferreros back in. Get 
get the lid to fit over the top like so okay and then we've got our belly band looking for my seam it's well hidden on the striped paper the seam is there we go and now let's do just a little bit of decorating now i have done the stamping and the die cutting ahead of time to make things go a little bit faster tonight pardon me while i pick up one of my stamped images off the ground <laughs> i'm going to use my take your pick tool to pick it up I can't use a magnet on that one. All right, so let me show you the pieces and parts we've got here. So I've got Merry and Bright. That is stamped in Granny Apple Green. And that is using the Merry and Bright stamp set. Okay, so I just stamped it and then just fussy cut it with scissors. It's really easy to cut those out. I've got a blueberry bushel deckled circle, and this is approximately one and three eighths in diameter. And then I've got a stylish shape circle that is an inch and a quarter, okay? I loved layering all those pieces together, so that's what we'll do. So this one is shaded spruce. I think I forgot to mention that. Shaded spruce on blueberry bushel. And I'm just using the color uh, coordination from the Mary Bold and Bite Bright Designer Series paper. So this piece, I'm just going to keep... Well, I'll tell you what. Let's put liquid glue on the belly band itself. <laughs> because I don't want to put it in the wrong spot. Just put it on the belly band and then we'll stick our circle right over the top. They're typing away. They're making you work tonight, aren't they? <laughs> All right, so merry and bright. I'm trying to decide if I want to do, I think I will do dimensionals. Let's go ahead and use uh, mini dimensionals here. Thank you, Brian. So that you guys know, I read all of your comments after the live stream. The software that I use saves all your comments for me so I can read them after the stream so I don't miss anything you guys said. So I appreciate all the comments. Thank you. All right, so mini dimensionals. I rigged up my uh, trash can. Um, now I'm not going to be able to show it to you because I screwed down to an adhesive platform sticking out of one of my uh, cabinets. But it's right next to me for me to put my little trash. All right, I'm going to grab my reverse tweezers because my fingers get in the way. Let's do that. Looks good, I think. There we go. Oh, I forgot I already took the backing off of those. Merry and bright. It's hard for me to not use a rhinestone, you guys. I think I am going to still add one. <laughs> this one needs a little, little cattywampus here. There we go. I love those bold sentiments there. Hmm. Can she fit a rhinestone? Let's see. I think so. I do want to try to keep the rhinestone to the belly band because otherwise it'll just get in the way. There we go. A little bit of bling there. Catch the light. So that is just a quick and easy way to finish off our origami lidded treat box using <clears throat> six by six piece of double-sided designer series paper. So let me show you a couple of the other um, papers that I used. I swear I had, oh yeah, I had one more somewhere. It's probably right in front of my face and I don't see it. So this is the tartan foil. 
I will say with the tartan foil, um, because of the type of paper that it is, you are gonna get a little bit of cracking along the edges there, and that's just because it's foil on both sides of the paper. But I love that contrast of the front and back of that one. This one is using the Modern Garden. So, a little Christmas version. It's so funny, I know why I took. <laughs> Sprouted legs and walked away. So I did make one with the um, All About Autumn Designer Series paper. Most of our um, specialty designer series paper that has the foil, most of them have already sold out for the holidays. Uh, but if you've got some specialty paper, that is a great paper to use for this box and really take it up a notch. This would be so cute as a little table favor on your dinner table if you're having holiday parties this season. Also really cute to take around with you as you're out and about doing your holiday shopping. Um, to bless other people for just making your day. I love doing that, giving little random acts of kindness. So again, it's one and a quarter by one and a quarter by two and a half and uses a six by six inch piece of paper. So super cute. The um, free project sheet link will be linked in the video description before the end of the day tomorrow, okay? I don't know where that went. <laughs> I had it earlier, but it's gone now, so. All right, so we're gonna work on a really quick and easy, simple card layout. And again, I've got everything die cut already. We will do some stamping, uh, but I'm gonna be using a base of thick basic white, and this measures four and a quarter by 11, and it is scored and folded in half along the long side at five and a half. Okay, I love using our thick basic white for card bases. Makes them much sturdier than our regular basic white. I've got Poppy Parade. I don't know what I was about to call that. Something with a P that measures um, five by three and three quarters. And then I've got a piece of the Merry Bold and Bright. I love this Fa La 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 pattern. This measures uh, four and three quarters by three and a half. So quick and easy layering there, okay. All right, so then I'm gonna use liquid glue to layer all these pieces together. You could use dimensionals if you like. And then we're gonna go ahead and layer that onto the Thick Basic White card base. One of my best tip for practicing is to use patterned paper that you don't love. We all have some of that laying around and we all have a lot of it laying around. So I always have a stash of paper that I don't love that I actually use to create my samples ahead of time. And I'll be honest, a lot of it ends up in the trash as I do trial and error to try to figure it out. But it's one of the best ways to learn and practice. All right, so, we you good? Are you talking about the diagonal folds? Yeah, okay. yep. Um, okay, so Poppy Parade was our card mat layer. Then we've got, I love this fa la 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 la. I can't get enough of that pattern. All right, and then I die cut a shaded spruce Christmas tree or evergreen tree. Oopsies. All right, so I've dropped a die, and I don't know if you guys have this little magnet wand that stretches out really long, but I can't do that for my stamped images, but <laughs> can you see that? I picked up my die off the ground without having to bend over to get it. <laughs> I love this thing so much. This is linked on my favorites page if you don't already have one. Um, so we're using the Marius Trees dies. I used the largest of the trees to cut out this from Shaded Spruce. And then I used the Silver Foils specialty pack to cut out this star, again, from the Marius Trees dies. I played around with the two um, stars in here. Can you see that little, um, the little hole? It's, it's an ejection hole, so that's if, 
your paper gets stuck in the dye, you can use um, a piercing tool to pop it out. That actually left a little circle in the center of my star. So I opted for the one that's got the rounded edges. And I just think it's such a sweet little star. So that's with the, the shiny silver from those silver specialty foils. And then I've got a strip of basic white, and this is just the regular weight, and this measures one by three and a half. This is gonna be a really clean and simple, easy card. If you're like me, and you're running out of time to make holiday cards, this might be a great layout for you. I swear things are sprouting legs and walking away. So Poppy Parade, and let me look for my stamp. sitting right on top of the Granny Apple Green. So I am actually bringing in an online exclusive stamp set. This is so very merry and I love the sentiment, tis the season to be jolly, okay? I think this one is still available in the online exclusives. All right. Oh, good, yeah. So those of you that are having trouble seeing your membership, it's possible you are not logged into the correct YouTube account. Uh, all right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp the sentiment, tis the season to be jolly, on our one inch by three and a half inch piece of basic white. I almost said whisper white. Get that lined up. So I've just stamped that off to the right side. Really simple for a sentiment piece, okay? And then we are going to layer. Try not to drop that guy again. All right, I'm gonna start with the tree. This was not the first iteration of this card, was it, Brian? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I showed him one, I'm like, does it need something? He's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I know it does, doesn't it? So this is what we came up with. I pictured it in my mind while we were eating dinner and pulled it together. Sometimes I wonder if um, the busyness of the holidays, I think, um, sort of overwhelms our minds. And I know sometimes we can lose mojo because of that. Um, and it's totally okay. This is a really busy time of year. So just have some grace with yourself and try to escape to your crafting space if you can and just... Let the creativity happen. It might not come right away. If you're getting stuck, go ahead and take a look at Pinterest or even the catalog for inspiration. Case others um, to get your mojo flowing again. I know once I sit down and spend some time in my craft room, I'm always grateful for the time. All right, so I just did liquid glue on that silver star on the top. And it's a little bit floppy right now because I don't think I put enough glue at the tip so I'm just going to take a glue dot and we'll hide that underneath the star so that it stays put on our card. I'm going to slip that right underneath. There we go. Okay. And then this piece, I'm just going to layer right over that Christmas tree. Could not be more simple, but I love it. So I'm actually going to use liquid glue for this as well. You could absolutely pop it up on dimensionals. And this is the same width as the designer series paper panel. Just making sure I get that lined up there or straight. There we go. Got some ink on my finger there. Sign of a good time. There we go. Now I'm going to add one little piece of bling because I can't help myself. If only I had remembered where I put it. <laughs> I'm going to do the uh, a large rhinestone. And we'll just pop that off to the side here, I think is where, yeah, that looks good. So a little bit of silver foil, a little bit of a rhinestone bling, and then letting the rest of the colors and the simplicity of the layout make this card pop. But really clean and simple, quick and easy 
my favorite kind of holiday card to make, especially if you're going to be making a bunch of them. Okay, so there is our card for tonight. There is our origami lidded treat box as well. Um, again, I will have project sheets linked before the end of the day tomorrow. That is the 30th, November 30th, 2023. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and tee up or Q and A. A quick reminder, if you've got a question for me to answer live tonight, put a Q in front of that question. And I'm gonna start going through that Q now. Get your questions pulled up here. And if you haven't already given us a thumbs up on tonight's stream, take a moment to do so if you're enjoying what we're sharing tonight. All right. Oops, hold on, I gotta go to the next screen. There we go. So that up first, your membership is not showing. That is likely because you might be logged into a different uh, YouTube uh, channel. Okay, Yvette, so go ahead and check that. After the stream, if you want to, feel free to send me an email at support at thepaperpixie.com. I can check that for you. I probably won't get back to you till tomorrow morning. I typically don't work after the live stream. Um, but uh, I can check to see um, the YouTube channel that you're using for tonight's comments and see if it matches the one for your Pixie Patron membership. Let's see. Can you glue the panels together versus just leaving them loose to maybe eliminate needing the belly band? You could absolutely try that, Cher. And what'll happen when you glue the panels is the there'll be a little bit less tension with the origami box um, because you're basically pushing the paper up against, um, I'm not phrasing that really well, I think, as, I, as it's coming out of me. <laughs> but I think if you're going to glue it, you're going to not have as much tension. Um, so I'm not sure that it'll stay together um, without the belly band that way. But give it a try. Again, um, use a piece of paper you don't really, a pattern of paper you don't really love, and see, see if you like that better with gluing it. Let's see. I've heard there is a guy themed collection soon. Can you share anything upcoming that we can start planning for? I'm trying to think. Uh, there's like a rock and roll suite. That might be the one that, you're, that you've heard about. I haven't spent a ton of time with the mini catalog yet. I have pre-ordered or pre-pre-ordered during the product purchase premiere. Those of us that attended the demonstrator event were able to pre-order a, um, a few items, but I haven't, I've started studying the catalog, but I'm not totally familiar. I'm trying to think of the other suites that are in there. I think it's the rock and roll suite that you might be thinking of really cool suite. So the embellishments have like lightning, lightning rods. Is that what you call a little zigzag? Tools. Oh, there's the tool one. Yes, there is a tool one coming. Do you guys remember when we had that tool die set, uh, probably like five years ago or so? This one is like just as cool. So there's even, um, a die that does the, what do you call the metal pegboard? It looks like a pegboard has all the holes in it. I think that's what it is, right? You can, yeah, but metal, right? It, they did a couple of samples with um, foil paper, but yeah, it's the tools one. Thank you guys. I, I was like, I don't know if it's the rock and roll one, but the tools, yes. And there's actually um, coordinating paper in the celebration brochure. So mm, I love it. So yes, I did get that one in my pre-order. I told you I'm on like vacation brain still. <laughs> uh. Kelly, all right, I have the mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine. I have trouble sometimes with the plates. I can get it to work if I stagger the plates. Has that been an issue for you at all? Not personally for me. However, Stampin' Up! did, um, I'm trying to think if I can get, I don't know if I can get to my plate. So I'm gonna try to describe it because I've got, there's stuff all over the floor as we're moving things around. Um, the staggering on the plates, originally they had told us to stagger it kind of as like steps. Instead, what I want you to try is to stagger them sort of in an E formation. So that being said, um, you're gonna wanna do the bottom, the bottom clear plate, your uh, cardstock and die, and then the top plate, I'm not gonna be able to do that with one hand. Let me see if I can, trying to see if I have like three of something because I don't actually you know what do I have 
all the plates. This isn't a good example because it's not the mini, but um, if you have the three plates, let's see if this will make sense. You wanna make an E, meaning, and these aren't the same plates, but let's see if the camera will focus. So the bottom and the top are at the same level. The middle, you pull backwards just a little bit. And what that does is when these pinch, I'm trying to keep it in front of my face so the camera focuses. When these pin, these will pinch down a little bit, which makes it easier for the machine to grab those plates. And this is for the mini, the recommendation for the mini. So try an E formation instead of staggering. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And one of these days, I will be able to get to my mini plates really easily and answer that much better next time. Oops, I went the wrong way, hold on. <laughs> I put my mouse away. All right, so let's see. Laura, this is a great question. No, you cannot. Um, the reason for that is the formulas have changed. So the recommendation today is because formulas will change sort of over time, when you have, an, when, my recommendation in Stampin' Ups as well is when you buy a new ink pad, also buy the ink refill at the same time. That will make sure that you're getting the ink pad and the ink refill formulas that match, okay? So um, the old ink refills are definitely a different formula than the current ink pad. So I would recommend investing in the new ink refill for your Real Red ink pad, okay? Good question. Terry, that's a good question. I think that cardstock's gonna be a little bit too thick for um, cardstock, but give it a try. Again, you'll just use a, you know, a five by six piece to make the box. Try it with cardstock. You may have to stick with, I know the weight of basic white and our colored cardstock is technically the same, but because of the way the fibers are and the, the ink, they feel a little bit different, like the, the colored cardstock feels a little bit heavier, but try basic white, especially if you like to make your own designer series paper. Try it and see how that works for you. Do I have gatherings to showcase product or is it only through your channel here? I think your question is if I do anything in person, Snow Shadow. I am a 100% online business, so everything that I share is what you see here on my YouTube channel and my social media channels. I'm mostly on YouTube these days. It's about all I can handle at the moment with just life in general, but um, yeah, I don't do any in-person gatherings. It's all um, all online. It, it actually allows me to reach a lot more people that way um, because I do love to teach and, and teach as many people as I can, so. All right. This question from Renee. Did Renee have a question about the Take Your Pick tool? I'm gonna see if I can go find your comment, I Renee. No Let's see. Just recently, so. Yeah, it just says take your pick tool. Renee, I'm not sure about your question, but I have reached the end of the questions at the moment. So, um, let's see. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Again, if you have a question and I didn't get a chance to answer it, feel free to email me at support at thepaperpixie.com. We'll be live again next week, December 6th? 6th. December 6th for episode 309. So December 6, 2023 will be episode 309, 8 p.m. Eastern time right here on the channel. I wanna give a big shout out to my Pixie Patron members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you are interested in becoming a Pixie Patron, there is a join button right next to the subscribe button. And if you don't see that, you can just go to thepaperpixie.com slash patron. That will take you to the patron page. We appreciate all of your support. Thank you everyone for joining me tonight live, as well as those that are watching the replay. I hope you learned a fun tip or trick or two. If you did, please be sure to like the video, hit subscribe so you don't miss any videos that I come out with in the future. That helps us here on the channel. And again, any questions, email me at support at thepaperpixie.com. And don't forget, all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie we'll see you next wednesday december 6th for episode 309 take good care and here's a shout out to my pixie patrons bye